can just you can just sit normally like that. Alright. So like the way like the way the way you would in the chair? Yeah, the way people would yeah. sit in chairs okay. is fine. I can do that. Great. Great. The name's um Tony Anthony. Uh people, my friends call me Rigatoni. That was a good time. That was a good time for everybody. For not just for me, uh, but for you know society, I think. You got the lights right. You done fucking with the fucking lights. Yeah, people just give me just give me a moment here. I was doing the scene. I was uh, I played down at Goober Sports Bar. I did all the little clubs: Goober Sports Bar, Schooners Sports Bar. Back to Goobers. And then Schooners again after that. And I was at a bar called Schooners a lot. I worked there. I made posters for the band. I used to drink there and hang out a lot. And so as a result, I would help move bass rigs when I could. My name is Tom Telly Watkins. And I acquired the name Telly because of my guitar playing. But before that, I was actually known as Stan Terra because at the bars, I used to help the guys bring in and out the bass rigs. So I'm playing, I look out in the crowd, I see this guy I've never seen there before. Now that, and that says something because it was about the same four or five people that came to see every show at Goobers. Actually, Goobers only had a maximum capacity of, of five people. So I see this guy there and he's really digging it. I went down to Goobers and I saw this guy playing, and it was beautiful. And uh, I thought to myself, I said to myself, I thought, well, this guy wants cocaine. There's no question about that. And I, I saw this guy playing, I heard him, and I said, now that guy has got great, great cocaine. My name is Ted Scoop Reynolds. I'm a producer, a musician. So after the show, we got to talking. I said, uh, you know, you got this great sound. Um, how much blow can I buy from you right now? And uh, he tells me he's got an idea. I've got this idea for this band. What do you know about skirting around intellectual property laws? I said, I'm not an intellectual and I don't own any property. He asked me if I knew anything about music licensing, which, I mean, I did. I was making posters for the band. I was moving bass rigs all the time. So it's like, you know, you don't have to fucking talk to me about licensing. I mean, I'm in the business, you know? It turns out you can't use someone else's music in a movie or something without their permission. They need to buy the songs, and they don't want to pay for the songs, so we got to make fake songs that sound like but not be the song. We got a call from E! Entertainments. Uh, they're doing a thing about Springsteen, and uh, they couldn't use any Springsteen music, so they wanted something that sounded a little bit like Springsteen. <laughs> You know, right out of the gate, I think we had a common connection. When we heard our sound, everyone looked at one another and said, let's make money. I mean, money. So the Springsteen one went good, and uh, we started getting more calls. All these documentaries, people, again, you're trying to talk about a classic album. You can't use any songs from the classic album. You got to have something back there. What are they going to talk about music in silence? You need background music. What the fuck is wrong with you? You need background music. There's no background music. You're talking about music and it's dead silent. What the fuck is wrong with you? So we started getting more calls for all these music documentaries. I mean, Guns N' Roses unauthorized documentary. Guns N' Roses, is, a, is a, that's, a, that's a big one. Axl Rose doesn't let anyone do shit. You know, Duff McKagan has to pay Axl $5 when he looks in the fucking mirror. Give me a break. Deep Purple. Steely Dan's. We went down to Midtown Manhattan Town to hear the dawn sing his sweet blues for us. was free, the cocaine was pure and white, the saxophone man told me I'll feel alright. One thing 
I loved about these guys is they had no musical personality whatsoever. I could tell them to do absolutely anything, and they had nothing of their own to offer it. You gotta understand that we, we wouldn't just change one note. We would change some, uh, some cu couple notes. We go in the studio, we make the song, the documentary comes out, we get the money. We, we give them the song, they put out the documentary, we get the money. Documentary money, documentary money, they give me the money. They put out the documentary, they give me the money. They give me the money after they put out the documentary. What do you want me to do? What am I supposed to spend my time doing? Going to church? Oh, it's great, I could buy more cocaine. I mean, right out of the gate, when you can buy more cocaine, life is good. Yeah, I mean, we used to talk about excess. I mean, we'd be at Goober's and we'd be doing shots. They would have specials on shots, which first of all, we could afford. And then we'd go in the parking lot and fucking choke pigeons and shit. It was amazing. We were above the law in a way. I, I was gacked when I did it. I still have a couple of those dead fuckers. You know, for me, it didn't change a whole lot. The difference was before the band started, before the band started taking off, I was a degenerate gambler. And, uh, happily, um, not horses or football or anything. It was high school girls lacrosse. You know, I realized, uh, you know, once we started making a little money, you know, it's no longer degenerate behavior if you can afford it. Well, for one thing, I bought a brick pizza oven for my backyard. It was ninety six thousand dollars. I also put a pool in there, filled it with Skittles. I bought a toboggan hill. I bought a junior high school. I bought a wig shop, ran that into the ground. I built a wing on a hospital to throw parties in. When did you start dabbling in collecting pewter statues? Oh. <sighs> pewter is an odd mistress. You know, I, I, um, I dated a girl, um, Josephine, who was a Renaissance fair girl. And our first date, uh, she, she gave me some mead beautiful silver chalice, uh, ruby encrusted. I didn't like her, but I fucking loved that chalice. And the more the money came in, the more I was able to purchase things, salt and pepper shakers, candelabras. I loved candelabras. I mean, I, I put two in the bathroom just because I could. Uh, it started to get to be started to get to be a bit much. It started to take over. I got into that pewter a little bit. I danced with the pewter devil, sure. I went with Telly one time, I got myself a pewter bust of Ernest Borgnine. But boy, did he love that shit. It was really hard to see Telly throw his life away at that habit, you know? Uh, I'm more of a glass guy myself. The guy just couldn't get enough pewter. What are you gonna do? Tony and Telly were butting heads all the time. It was uh, it was a real pain in my ass. You know, di stress, difficulties, and stuff. You know, the way I see it, you spend enough time with anybody, eventually you're gonna stick them with a letter opener in the lobby of Caesar's Palace in March of '98. That's what I'm saying. Would you care to elaborate on that incident, or which time? Tony was a real hothead. Uh, he was constantly scratching himself with his gun. Uh, he was eating cereal uh, with his gun. He was signing contracts with his gun. It was really aggressive. Uh, it really made everybody in the studio uncomfortable. It comes with the territory a little bit. They started. There started being this common belief that I was, you know, volatile or or dangerous or something in the studio, which to me is total fucking bullshit. <laughs> oh, look out! Oh yeah! Hey. <laughs> What are we talking about again? Excesses? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Huh? I could see that the band was starting to fail. The market was getting flooded with copycat bands that were copycatting our copycatting. And it was getting really hard to, um, to stay on top of the mountain, especially as digital recording came along. To replicate Deep Purple when we started out, you had to buy an amplifier, punch holes in it with a screwdriver, 
do a bunch of cocaine. Then you sound like Deep Purple. Now what do you do? You download a fucking sound pack, digital sound pack, audio sound pack. Takes no effort. My nine-year-old son can do it. He's a fucking idiot. Give me a fucking break. And all of a sudden, everybody could just make their own pastiche projects in their bedrooms. Particularly Tony's nine-year-old kid, who I thought was great. So I fired the other two guys, and I just hired him. And really, he's excellent. Scoop took the writing credit for himself. So right out of the gate, even though I was there for him and I wanted to support him, felt like he was fucking me. felt real bad today I do not feel that good I wish I didn't feel as bad as I do today I walk up to him I said I go I said to him I go cash me out I'm done I'm done I'm done Done. I'm done. I got a new band. I'm done. It's just how we do it. It's how we get pizza. Just like normal people, just like everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Nice guy. He's a fan. He said he was a fan. He said he's a fan. All right. Carry on. So we're talking about. Mm. So, mm. so we really mm. discussed the way. Mm. Oh, fuck. So we're talking about I miss the money. I think about the money. And, um, you know, I hate my son. We founded the Tom Telly Watkins Pewter Prevention Center, which is, that's my life's work. We've got a, a room at the, at the back of schooners that we're allowed to use for meetings. I'm proud I can share my tale to others and I can help them. We haven't found people with the exact same problems as me, so sometimes it's kind of cool because I'll just bring a couple of my pewter pieces and we can drink from them. But, um, you know, I take pleasure in the simple things now. Like, on those rare occasions where I can catch my breath. Man, I love that. You know, do I still see them? I still see them in so much as they still buy cocaine from me. But do I see them like you're going to come over, do a little barbecue, have a fist fight? No. No, I don't see him like that anymore. I see Scoop from time to time uh, when we're buying cocaine off a of Rigatoni. I see Telly, but I don't really notice him. And, you know, Rigatoni, I don't want to say our relationship's corrupt, but it's sort of defunct. Yeah, I still see Tony sometimes, actually. He was the best man at my sentencing. You know, and I, I like to say this, I put this on record, you know, that it's not a, it's not a thing of uh, we hate each other or anything like that. I want those guys to know. You can still buy cocaine from me for as long as you want, you guys. We had great sounds, we had a great time, we did tons of blow, and we never once got sued. I wanted to do something that, that you know, people would remember, you know, something that I could put my mark on the world and have people, when I walk down the street, say, there goes Rigatoni. So it wasn't about the money as much as it was the legacy. No, it was about the money. I needed, I needed the money bad, real bad. Yeah. I was on my fourth ex-wife by that time, so I was fucked. Can you tell us about some of your, uh, your axes here in your collection? Sure, sure. Uh, well, we'll start right here at the start. Yeah, this is, we use this a bunch. It's orange. And this guy right here is interesting to me because uh, it's not, it's not one color. You know, if you see it, it's called a burst. Five. Right, this is a base. 
and I'm not allowed to touch things. So, sorry. Um, but look at this. Look at this. Now there's some history with this guitar in here. Because this one's green. Um, and black. So there's a lot of history there. There's a, this is interesting because this has 12 strings. And it's also black. I see a... I see a Telecaster here. Is this is this where you got your name? Is this, is no, this I've, the... I've never seen that guitar in my life. In fact, I don't know what it's doing here. Uh, somebody should get it out now. Are we done? Fuck that thing. My son gave me this. Kid's 90, little fucking asshole. Fuck him.